There were several groups in the prehistoric Southwest that made lead-based glazed paints. Now, this wasn't glazing the whole pot like people often do today. This was just paints that were lead-based and therefore had a glazy texture to them. Now, I've tried in the past to create lead-based glazed paints and failed. And that is because I believe there is an extra step. It's not as simple as just adding lead to your paint. So today I'm gonna to try that extra step and see if I can achieve lead-based glazed paints on my prehistoric replica pottery. So come with me today. So there's different kinds. There's Rio Grande glazewares, which were made uh, in the Pueblos along the Rio Grande. Uh, and that was the latest type that probably uh, continued to be produced up into Spanish times, so maybe 1600s. And then what's considered the birthplace of glazed paint in the Southwest, in the White Mountain region, where lead-based glazed paint first appears in maybe the late 1200s. But over the years, a lot of people have tried to reproduce this glazed-based paint on pottery and had varying degrees of success. Most people have struggled to get it right. So when I first approached the question of lead-based glazed paint, I looked at some of the archeological reports where they had done studies on the paint and they can look at this paint and they can tell you what the chemicals are in it and therefore get an idea of what the recipe is. Based on White Mountain Red Wares, uh, these archeologists will make lists of, of different paints that they've sampled and they'll say, you know, this one is 20% copper and 30% manganese and 10% lead or whatever the ratios are. This one contains more iron, this one contains more silica, all these different uh, recipes or at least uh, the chemicals that are existing in the paint. That doesn't tell us exactly what the, how the paint was made because uh, these materials are first of all processed in some way that we can't see. And then in the firing process, those chemicals can go through changes as well. They've speculated, for example, that that paint can actually wick up uh, irons or silicas out of the slip underneath of it. So that when we see the silica and the iron in the paint, it may be drawing those chemicals out of the slip that it's painted over. So uh, this gives us a starting point to look at these reports and the, the analysis of the paint, but it doesn't really answer how to make it. Now this cylinder is a good example of one of my attempts. I first went looking for lead ore in about 2016. I did some research online first and I found out where lead mines were in the area, old lead mines. And then I went to those places and I hiked around hoping to find bits of galena. Galena is a beautiful, silvery, heavy lead ore, easily recognized. And it's what archeologists believe was used to produce these lead-based glazed paints. But after a couple of days, out there and finding none of it, I eventually just went to a rock shop in Tucson and purchased a chunk of galena. Then I ground it up into a powder, which I thought was gonna be difficult because like I said, it's, it's heavy and uh, it's crystalline, but it, it broke up and ground fine fairly easily. And then I mixed it with some paint thinking, well, if I look at these recipes in the archeological reports and copy their percentages, whatever that is, 20% copper, 30% manganese, 10% lead, you know, that I can fire these pots and as long as I fire them hot enough, I'll get glaze. Uh, that wasn't the case. Uh, I've fired as hot as I can on these and I have not been able to glaze them. Uh, this was about my third attempt after I bought that chunk of galena from the rock shop. First, I tried copying the percentages exactly from the archeological report and got nothing. Uh, this one actually had more lead than was indicated and it's interesting because if you look at it, there's places where the paint is gray and there's other place, places where the paint is a rich black. And there doesn't seem to be any explanation for why some areas are blacker than others. So I think it's chemistry. I think these areas may have a higher percentage of lead just based on you know how the paint was stirred up or loaded onto the brush. Maybe it went on thicker. Uh, at any rate, I think it's, it's chemical. It's not, it, it was all painted off the same palette out of the same mixture, so it's not that. But I think these areas may have had more lead and they did something chemically in the firing because there seems to be no explanation for why some areas are black while most of it is gray. So, I, I mean, something was right here, but something also was not working.
So then I read a report by Eric Blinman. Blinman is an archeologist for the state of New Mexico, but Blinman has done a lot of research and experimental archeology span trying to reproduce glaze paints. A report I read that Blinman wrote indicates that at San Lazaro Pueblo in New Mexico, there was evidence found showing that the lead or the galena may have been pre-roasted, oxidized, or fritted before it was used as a paint. Now this would change everything because that is another step in the process that looking at the paints will not show us. He said that this lead, this naturally occurring lead galena is full of sulfur and that the galena has to be pre-roasted. It has to be ground and then heated above 600 degrees Celsius in order for it to oxidize and get rid of some of that sulfur. Now I'm paraphrasing here. This is not exactly what he said, but that's the general gist of it if I could give it to you in a sentence or two. So I took my ground galena, which I told you I'd been using on paints, and I put it in this little cup that I'd made before. I poured it in and I put it in the firing. That firing I know went to at least 800 degrees Celsius because I measured it with my thermocouple and my infrared heat gun. And when I got done with the firing, lo and behold, the ground galena had hardened into a solid chunk. Now, when I look inside of it, it's still glittery like galena. So whether it has oxidized thoroughly, I don't know, but it did melt a little for it to have become a solid chunk like this. So that gives me hope that perhaps, perhaps, it's ready and I can now add it to my paint and it might produce glaze. I don't know. There is, there is a yellowish powder on the surface, which indicates perhaps sulfur. Perhaps that sulfur that we need to get rid of is there. So I am going to today grind up some of this galena ore, which is ground and then roasted in a pottery firing up to about 800 C. And we will see if this is all we need to produce lead-based paint. So I've got this pot here that I produced in the recent Zoom pottery workshop that I held over the weekend. It is slipped with that yellow slip that turns red. That is common on White Mountain Redwares. And I am going to grind up some of this roasted galena ore, mix it with some manganese and some clay, maybe a little organic binder, see what we can get. Okay, so it's all painted with the lead-based paint, um, best I can do for now. I didn't take a lot of time on it because uh, it's experimental and so I tend not to get too elaborate with the designs if I'm not sure how it's gonna come out. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the close-ups, but there's a little bit of glitter in the paint. You can kind of see that galena still sparkling even after it's been roasted. So I don't know if that has some effect or not, but um, it is interesting that you can see that glittery lead. And I, I don't think I'll see it when I'm done, but will it turn into glaze? I don't know. We will see. So I will be firing this on Saturday. That's when we're doing the last day of our my Zoom pottery workshop. And so I'm gonna be live streaming the firing to those students who took the workshop. We'll see then whether or not this paint melts into a glaze or not. So stay tuned.
Okay, uh, firing's done and somewhat successful. So most of this pot is not glazed. If you looked at it, it's a very matte paint. But it actually glazed in places. There's places, like right in there, and right in this area here where my finger is, where it went glazy. So uh, I'm gonna have to take this home Clean it up. There's there's a number of places here where it's glaze or subglaze. So um, I'm gonna need to take it home, clean it up, and figure out what went on in those places, what was causing it to glaze in places. I think just looking at it, that these are places where the paint was thicker. But I'm not sure in all cases that thickness was the only uh, contributing factor. So I, I want to look at it closely. Look at the places that glaze and see if I can figure out if it was an atmosphere thing, reduction versus oxidation, if it was maybe pieces of that uh, galena that were more oxidized in that previous firing, I'm not sure. So a little more experimentation is necessary, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. This fire only went to just a little over 800 degrees, so uh, if you look at you know the melting temperature for, for uh, uh, lead or galena, I mean it's like over a thousand. So, we're past that. We're sh we're glazing pottery in the 800 degree range, so uh, we're making progress. I just need to figure out, uh, you know, what's going on. So maybe do another one, paint it on really thick, or maybe do a test tile and paint it in varying degrees of thickness. Uh, see if that, you know, you can show that the thickness is the contributing factor. Anyway, more experimentation, but it turned out real good. Uh, this pot has a really great red color on it, and the polish came out real good, so I'm pretty happy with the pot and uh, the glazing is fascinating. So I am getting it and, and that is exciting. Uh, the other pottery is, is student pottery from my workshop last week. Uh, I live streamed this firing at the same time that I was recording it for this video. Uh, really good successful firing and I'm actually gonna mail these pots back to the students next week. So some of these pots actually were mailed from uh, Minnesota and uh, Colorado. So they're gonna be mailed back to them next week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today, learning about prehistoric lead-based glazed paint in the American Southwest. Uh, please, if you have questions about lead-based paint, put them in the comments. I'd be glad to answer those, and uh, we can learn about this together. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that like button for me. If you'd like to learn more about mineral-based paints, natural pigments on pottery, check out this video over here, which is going to go into more detail on that. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.